Hey, I'm Brett McLaughlin. I am an editor at O'Reilly Media, and I am sitting here with Garth Braithwaite, and he has a, kind of a whole list of things here. I know you work full-time as a director of user experience, so you're coding, designing, but I also know you've managed to squeeze in the Flex4 cookbook for us at O'Reilly. Yep. Uh, Co-author on that, right? Yeah, yeah. And you managed to host RIA Radio, which is a pretty yeah. cool podcast. And I even hear that we're working on sort of a mock-up of the RIA Radio website or maybe a version of that for the next couple of days. Yeah, yeah. I really like to uh, work on projects that mean something. So, okay. So um, we, uh, we're lo working on something that could be production quality by the time right. it's done. Now, I am... Um, Truly a Flex 4 newbie. I've not done this. So what, for people that are watching this and are kind of sitting in my shoes, maybe have a programming background but not in any kind of Adobe stuff, what do you need to know? What do you want to be sure you have kind of in place coming in? And what maybe is, hey, go do this and then come back if you don't know? Right. Uh, so obviously basics, variables, arrays, mm -hmm. uh, things that are just kind of looping. I mean, things that are part of programming in general. Okay. So some programming experience, but you don't have to be... Helpful genius at assembly right. language or anything crazy. And then I, I also would take a look at object-oriented programming. Okay. So if you're not familiar with okay. public, private, inheritance, uh, all that stuff, okay. go take a look at it. Uh, you'll probably pick up on it quickly if you're just following along. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and client-side, server-side, I mean, I think of Flex as client-side, but even just already talking with you, it sounds like from some of the things I've heard, maybe that's a, a bad idea about Flex. Right, so if you have um, server-side uh, experience, that'll help mm -hmm. uh, as well. I mean, programming's programming, so some level helps. But okay. uh, we're going to be dealing all all with client-side. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you're familiar with HTML, JavaScript, that can okay. help as well. Okay. Uh, and then I think of Adobe. I mean, I have to admit Adobe is this design conglomerate. You know, we think about all their design products. I'm right. not that guy with the beautiful aesthetic sense of design. I have a, a buddy that I always hand it to. Hey, fix this. How much design do we need to know versus programming? Well, uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt to understand measurements and pixels mm -hmm. uh, at all, but uh, we're going to be dealing in the code. We're going to okay. be, everything that we create eventually will be visual, okay. uh, but we're going to be down and dirty in the code the whole time. I'll be given exact numbers as okay. far as what measurements we need, so and you don't have to worry about that. you've already done some of the wireframing we're working with today? Yeah, exactly. We've already prepped exactly where we're going with okay. the wireframes. Okay. Uh, but that's just going to be our, our road map, so to speak. Cool. Let's take a look at that first. So I know we're building a Flex app. Walk me through exactly what it is we're doing and, and how you even got to that point. I mean, what, are you mocking this up? or This isn't HTML, so I'm kind of out of my depth as to how you even approach this kind of thing. Right, so with every big project, especially with applications, you need to do some planning. Sure. Um, and that's kind of one of the, the, the problems we have to worry about when we do these video training. Sometimes it looks like we just magically came up right. with the perfect layout <laughs> numbers, right? Um, but actually planning out this application. So what we're doing is we're building an application for this podcast, uh, the RIA Radio podcast. And the application shows the episodes, it shows the hosts and the guests. Right. Um, but really, we're going to focus on some of the layout aspects of it, and we're going to focus on the contact form at the end. So this is the front end stuff, and then back end is later. Right. Okay. And right now, we're really going to do, I mean, you can see from the wireframes, it's all gray boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, our application is going to be gray boxed. Okay. So uh, adding the, the, the style to it and the color and all of our, our UI skins, right. we'll be applying not in this okay. <laughs> section. Okay. Okay. So well, we've got to uh, have all this to actually skin in the first place, right? Right. You, you want to have, again, you want to have it all planned out so you know which components you're going to use. Okay. And, but you're also going to want to keep skinning in mind. So okay. trust me on what components I'm using because later it will be important when we get into the skinning stage. Okay. okay. And you've got what, Adobe Illustrator, it looks like, open here? Yeah, this is Illustrator CS5, um, but really you could flush it out with anything. There are some actual tools that uh, will allow you to, to kind of bridge the gap between this and Flex. Okay. Uh, you could look at Flash Catalyst, and actually Illustrator outputs a format similar to Flex graphics okay. called FXG. Okay. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to be looking at this as a as a as a rule, and we're right. going to be building the exact same thing. Okay. So this is the equivalent of having Photoshop open and then designing a web page based on that. Right. Exactly. Um, but we can get really exact with this. Okay. So and again, especially but, when we're What do you mean by really exact? Like we can get pixel. Perfect with this. We, when we're working with Flex, um, we can define every single pixel the okay. way we want it. So you're to. saying like this logo here is at, you know, what is that, 240 or whatever, whatever that's at. We can get it at exactly 250, exactly 250 pixels over, 
exactly 10 down. Right, we'll get even better than that because right here we're not talking about dynamic layouts. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make some stuff that will move and shift as content grows and shrinks okay. and as we change our view area. Okay. So it's better than that, but our, our width and our height will be exactly the same and, and we know exactly what it wants to do, when, what we want it to do when we move it. Okay. So and now you said so this is an episodes page, it looks like. Is right. it like a navigation bar there in the middle? Right, so we've got our, our main logo, large logo. Uh, and a, a, a good navigation bar here. This shows a list of episodes. Okay. And then if we scroll down here, there's a couple of contact reviews. form, right? Yeah, we've got a contact form. Will be the last thing that we look okay. at. Okay. So these are all some of the different controls we can use. Or components is the right term. Right. These are all components. The uh, controls works as well, but uh, yeah, we'll be talking about them in, in terms of Spark components. There'll be a couple uh, other components that we'll look at. Okay. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Cool. All right. Let's get going.